All right, guys, welcome back to Cichlid Scape and the Fish Room. Tanks are doing absolutely awesome right now, but in the last video, you saw me add these Buenos Aires Tetra to the 55 gallon South American nature themed tank. At the time, I knew it was a little bit of a risk, but after seeing conflicting views both on YouTube and through Google searches, I thought I'd give them a whirl for a multitude of reasons. One of them being that they get around 2.5 to 3 inches, which is bigger than the average Tetra, like the black neons in my other 55 gallon. So today we're going to take a look at how they've settled in and what I've done in the last week or two regarding them and this tank. So here's previous footage I took of the Buenos Aires Tetra about three or four hours after I added them to this aquarium. They all settled in fine, I got six of them as some sources online said they could be a little bit nippy if they weren't kept in groups, so I thought a group of six in this instance would be absolutely golden and throughout the two week period that this video was taken I've had absolutely no issues with them nipping. It was also said online, whether that's Google or YouTube, that they could nip and destroy aquarium plants. Some channels said they did, some channels said they didn't, which is partially the reason why I thought I'd try them. I only have Val, Cryptocarini, Anubius and Jabbafern in this aquarium, but again, I personally found no instance of them munching away at any of the plants. I had been feeding some baby brine shrimp and a solid staple food of some ultra fresh fish food that I will show you in an upcoming video pretty soon and they seem to absolutely love it so that could have negated their plant eating tendencies but again I had no issue with that. The issue that I did have with this fish is that even though I had them in the aquarium for about a week and a half, two weeks and they seem to settle in the tank eating just fine and everything like that. They did school toward the bottom half of the aquarium, which in this specific tank just doesn't work out as the Geophagus tapahos that I've got in here, which is a group of four. They're always in the mid level to the bottom of the aquarium and they are obviously sand sifters, so they need that space and that territory for themselves. This is only a four foot tank and with the four of them, I felt like this was a necessity for them. So what I decided to do was get rid of the Buenos Aires Tetra. An option of mine that I flirted with was to move them into the 125 gallon South American cichlid tank that you can see here. But for the time being, I didn't think they were quite big enough just yet. And I was a bit worried about Bubba the Blood Parrot kind of chasing them and making their life a little bit of living hell. So I decided to take them back to the fish store that I previously got them from, but will be purchasing this fish sometime in the future again for the 125 gallon, as I think for a bigger Tetra in there with the fish that I currently keep, it'll just look absolutely awesome. So make sure you stay tuned for that and overall the experience of this fish was a good one. It just didn't quite work out in this specific aquarium with the fish that I'm keeping. The store that I bought them from and then took them back to is actually the store that I used to work at. So they allow me to take stuff back if I, if I ever need to and that kind of thing. So I took them back, walked around the store for a little bit and also picked up some fish. This time I decided to go with eight, a little bit of a safer option. So let's take a look at what we've got. if you're well versed in tetra species you may have been able to see what I've got but these are head and tail like tetras they have pretty much the same body shape as your commonly available tetras like your black neon tetra cardinal tetra standard neon tetra so I think they'll fit in really well with this tank they're also quite muted in terms of the coloration but if you look very very closely like I'm showing you now they do have some really nice colors mine have an orange amberish yellowy hue at the back of the tail and also right over the eye similar to how a red eye tetra would look in that sense 
but it also has a nice little black splotch almost behind the head and then some green uh, feathering or, or little iridescent marks across the body as well. In terms of lifespan for this guy, it's pretty much the same as your, your standard Tetra again, so anywhere between two to five years. And in terms of max size, you're looking at about two inches. Additionally, just the same as the vast majority of Tetras, they are pretty hardy, tolerating a wide range of pHs and temperatures, according to the research that I've done online. And of course, we'll eat a plethora of things that you feed them. And right now they are just having a mix of Omega-1 Supercolor Flakes and some ultra fresh fish food that I've just recently got. And it's working out brilliantly for them. Overall, I'm really, really happy with this purchase. From the get-go, they started higher in the tank and this is about an hour after adding them and they are mid-level to the highest point of the water, staying away from the geophagus, which I think is really, really beneficial in this aquarium, both for the geophagus and for the general display of the tank, as now we have fish all over the tank, which is really quite eye-catching when you're just sitting back, relaxing and watching the tank. So in conclusion, I think these head and tail like tetras will work out absolutely awesome. I've got a few bigger guys in there and hopefully the rest of them will grow to that size as well. I've not noticed the geophagus bothering them much yet, which is obviously great news. So let's take a closer look at them and uh, see what an awesome fish these really are. So overall guys, I'm really happy with the head and tail like Tetra. Let me know your thoughts on them in the comments below and also let me know if you think I should add another school of Tetra to this aquarium. As you guys know, in the 55 gallon, I've got about 19 black neon Tetras. I was debating pulling maybe five or six of them over to this tank so I could have a school of their head and tail lights and the black neons. And obviously these fish are fairly similar body wise and i'm sure they're pretty similar in terms of behaviorally as well so they'll probably be schooling toward the top of the aquarium as well which will just fill out this tank a little bit more so let me know if you think that would be a good idea also let me know if you've had any experience with these head and tail like tetras and what you think to them i think they are absolutely awesome and some of the macro shots that i was able to get for this video just really showcases this fish and how cool, vibrant and multicolored they really are with the hints of green almost showing through the body. In conclusion, I am absolutely loving this tank at this point. The angelfish is doing great, the geos are doing fantastic and I've at least got one male geophagus who's starting to get that really vibrant red in his head, which is really exciting to see. The geos eventually will probably be going in the 125 gallon South American tank once some of the more mellow geophagus that I've got in there get a little bigger. At that point, the angelfish will be going into a 40 gallon breeder that I've currently got in waiting 
These head and tail like Tetras will also be going in that tank, which leaves us a 55 gallon completely free. I'm unsure what to do with the aquarium at this point. So again, if you've got any comments or suggestions, let me know in the comments. And uh, I guess for anyone who's a long subscriber to the channel, you might be excited about what I'm thinking. So we'll just leave it there. Thanks for watching this one. Thanks for the support on the channel. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one and we'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.